Usually when people hear how much money someone makes, their very first question is, what do you do? Maybe they're genuinely interested or maybe they're hoping to get in on the action. Either way, unless someone amassed their fortune by exploiting people or the environment, it's near impossible to judge them for how they put millions or even billions of dollars in the bank. If anything, we admire their creativity. These entrepreneurs didn't go the standard business or finance route. They drummed up or stumbled upon some zany idea and then their gut told them that they could make a fortune. And in these cases, they were right. Here are the 10 craziest ways people got rich. Renting goats. Nah. Dozens of companies actually rent goats for munching on and eradicating invasive plants, as well as creating fire breaks to stop the spread of wildfires. Since their appearance on Shark Tank, Rent-A-Goat has become the most well-known and profitable goat renting company in the United States. Matthew Richmond and Mike Cannaday started the company in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, all the way back in 2010, with the idea of using a more natural land clearing method than gas guzzling machinery in cancerous pesticides. It costs between $400 and $800 per acre, and on Shark Tank, Matthew Richmond even joked that the goats naturally fertilize as they work. Goat poopies! Back in 2013, the sharks didn't invest in the company since they hadn't yet turned a profit, but they stuck with it, and as of 2023, the company's net worth is roughly $2 million. Selling Pet Rocks Perhaps the most famous get-rich-quick scheme of all time was Gary Dahl's Pet Rock in 1975. At the time, Gary Dahl was an advertising executive and was known for his fun, quirky campaigns. After listening to his friends talk about the work and mess that comes with caring for children's pets, he put googly eyes on a rock and started marketing the Pet Rock. But the genius was in the packaging. He cut breathing holes in the box and it nestled on a little bed of straw and even included a manual on caring for and training your new pet rock. It sold for $3.95 and he sold roughly 5 million of them in just 6 months. After only a year of being in business, the fad was completely over, but Gary Dahl walked away with 15 to 18 million dollars. A husband sued his wife over their ugly baby. Originally, Jian Feng from China said that his incredibly ugly newborn didn't look like either parent, so he accused his wife of cheating. A paternity test revealed that he was in fact the father, but his wife admitted to not telling him about the $100,000 she spent on various plastic surgeries before they met. Plastic surgery was somewhat of a controversy in China at the time. When he saw the side-by-side -side pictures of her before and after, he was appalled. He filed a lawsuit suing her in May of 2012, and in a very controversial decision, the male judge sided with Jian Feng and even awarded him over $120,000. The public was outraged and some even suggested that his wife countersue him under the false pretenses of being a decent human being. Selling a banana taped to a wall Maurizio Catalan is an Italian artist known for his provocative and sometimes controversial works. He gained international recognition for his humorous approach to art. One of his most famous works is titled The Ninth Hour, which depicts Pope John Paul II being struck by a meteorite. His piece titled Comedian is simply a banana duct taped to a wall and is meant to question what art is. It became the most widely discussed piece of artwork in 2019 after it actually sold to three buyers. Two editions went for a $120,000 and the third went for $150,000. To the buyers, he said that because the banana will eventually rot, they can simply replace the banana and still consider it an original piece. But in 2023, artist Joe Morford actually sued Maurizio, claiming that his piece, Orange and Banana, duct tape plastic fruit to a wall, was the original back in the year 2000. The judge stated, probably not surprisingly, affixing a banana to a vertical plane using duct tape isn't protected under copyright law. <laughs> Shocker! Selling Secrets in 2005, novelist Frank Warren started Post Secret as a community art project inviting strangers to anonymously mail in their secrets on a homemade postcard. People mailed their personal desires, fears, humiliations, and sometimes even confessions that would devastate their families if they found out. That simple art project is still active as of July 2024 and has posted over a million secrets. At over 700 million viewers, it became the most visited advertisement-free blog in the world. 
world. On top of the site itself, Frank Warren has published six New York Times best-selling compilation books, a play, and even has conducted a series of live events and speaking engagements. He has an undisclosed net worth, but his projected earnings are in the millions. Since many secrets involve mental health struggles, he was able to donate over $1 million to suicide prevention. This earned him a Lifetime Achievement Award for Mental Health Advocacy. Buying a domain name. Domain squatting or cyber squatting is the act of purchasing a name for a website that doesn't exist yet, with the hopes of selling it to a higher bidder wishing to use the name for their site. This became pretty common in the mid-90s since not a lot of websites existed yet. In 1994, Chris Clark bought Pizza.com after seeing that Vodka.com had just sold for $3 million. He paid $20 for the name, then another $20 each year to keep the claim active. 14 years later, in 2008, he finally sold the domain name to National A1 Advertising for $2.6 million. The company owns several general domain names like free.com, babies.com, and cash.com and uses them for hubs to generate revenue for multiple companies. In Pizza.com's case, the largest pizza companies post news, promotions, and store locators for pizzas near you. Santa Mail. The tradition of writing letters to Santa Claus began in Clement Moore's poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, back in 1823. Back then, mailing letters to Santa involved putting them in a chimney. By the 1890s, many children began mailing them at the actual post office and still do today. In 2001, Byron Reese started Santa Mail, a service where children around the world could get a personalized reply letter from Santa with an authentic North Pole postmark. As a child, his parents would give him letters from Santa, and when his mother died, he started the business to honor her and share the magic with other kids. He sold over 10,000 letters in the first year, and since its inception, Santa Mail has sent over 500,000 letters priced at around $10 each. This sparked many other ventures for Byron Reese, and his current net worth is nearly $35 million. The Million Dollar Homepage when attending Nottingham University in England, 21-year-old Alex Tu came up with an advertising website called the Million Dollar Homepage. His goal was to sell 1 million pixels for $1 a piece in advertising space. For a minimum of $100, an advertiser could buy a 100 pixel block and display an image or logo of their choosing with a hyperlink to their site or product. He began promoting it himself online and the pixels were sold out in under five months. His earnings of $1 million sparked his career as a serial entrepreneur. After several not so successful endeavors, his mental health was in decline. He started meditating and in 2013, he founded the Calm Meditation app. It's become the biggest meditation app in the world. And as of April, 2024, its net worth is over $2 billion. Doggles. In 1997, Ronnie DeLulo was playing frisbee with her dog Midnight when he failed to make a catch because the sun was in his eyes. Human sunglasses, ski goggles, and swim goggles weren't working, so she created a pair from scratch. She invested $25,000 in the concept and brought them to trade shows where she was openly mocked. In 2002, she cold called PetSmart and asked how she could submit them for sales in their stores. Two weeks later, they responded saying that they'd take them in every store nationwide. They've since become popular with most motorcyclists whose dogs ride in sidecars or drivers whose dogs like to stick their faces out the windows. Veterinarians use them after canine eye surgery and most military and police canine units use them as well. Oddly enough, doggles don't work well in the water since they have holes on the side to keep them from fogging up. But on average, doggles earn roughly $3 million per year. Accidentally dropping something. In 1943, naval engineer Richard James was designing thin springs to keep everything balanced on a submarine. He accidentally dropped one of the designs and watched it coil end over end. This gave him the proverbial light bulb moment, thinking that it could be a fun children's toy. His wife, Betty, suggested the name Slinky because of the way that it moved. 18 months later, they co-founded James Industries with a $500 loan and began selling the Slinky in stores. It was an instant hit and they sold more than 100 million of them in the first two years. Now in the Toy Hall of Fame, over 350 million Slinkies have been sold with profits reaching over $3 billion. In 2009, the New York Times found that the number of Slinkies that have been sold could circle the globe 150 times. 
times. But that's all for this video, guys. Of course, if you enjoy it, as always, please leave a like and leave a comment and share it if you really enjoyed it because all those things help me out a lot in the algorithm. And of course, follow me on all the socials in the description. It's a great way to keep up with the community and all my announcements. And I go live on Twitch every day, also in the description. I'll see you guys next time.